Hi, my name is Brian and today I'm going to be doing a video on the um, Insight Tools True Track. So I'm going to be doing quite a bit of woodworking here in the near future and I need a way to break 4x8 sheets of plywood down into a more manageable size. And um, so, you know, Festool is just too expensive. Uh, well, okay, it's not too expensive. It's more money than I want to spend. And I don't really need something that fancy. Uh, what I'd really like is a panel saw, but I don't have space for it and it's crazy expensive. Um, I have built a panel saw in the past and it worked okay, but I think that a track saw is just right. Um, I'm actually, I really have thought very hard about the Makita track saw, but I decided to take a chance on the Insight Toolworks um, true track saw. Um, I, I learned after I bought it that there's some controversy about um, Eureka Zone versus True Track, and you know the sad thing is the Eureka Zone has some really bitter, nasty fans, um, and they'll probably flame me for having said that. But they're really negative on their forums. Um, so anyway, what I've done is I bought a True Track uh, starter, which is basically a, a four-foot piece of track. It's actually a 57-inch piece of track. I bought a couple of their clamps, and then I bought a really nice Dewalt. Um, corded um, skill saw and this is a DWE 575 SB so I don't consider this to be part of the cost of the track saw because quite frankly if the track saw doesn't work out it can go away. Um, I'm not super impressed. I bought the clamps because you know holding something down um, and hoping it'll stay put is a recipe for kickback and it's a recipe for cuts that don't work right. Now, the, the bad thing is um, I bought this last summer and then it just sat in the box for a while and so I've lost a couple of small parts. I lost some of the hardware. Uh, the beautiful thing is it, it is just standard hardware so I went to Home Depot and bought some bolts and I mean some screws. Um, one of the things that's really frustrating to me though is I'm looking at the clamps and they're just plain sloppy. This one's right, this one's crooked. It's just a clamp, it's still gonna work, but, um, you know, repeatability is, um, it's sort of the altar that woodworkers and machinists worship at. So if you have two parts that are supposed to be identical and they're not, um, that means you have a sloppy manufacturing process. That's really sad. So anyway, let's let's do it to it. Um, you know, these are still gonna work. Um, you know, $22, I don't know. It's just a little piece of aluminum. There's really not much to it. So um, anyway, what I've gotta do is I've gotta mount the, the, the track base to the saw. And that involves, <coughs> that involves doing some mean things to the saw. Okay, so, um, you know, I have followed their rules. Um, one of the challenges I have, I don't have their anti-chip strip. Um, you know, the reality of it is, is that um, a track saw is just a stand-in for a panel saw for me. I'm not going to do finished carpentry on this thing. I'm actually planning to uh, invest in a, a nicer table saw and so what I plan to do is just use this to break boards down so I really don't care if it chips or not. So I've got a 3 16 inch drill bit mounted in my DCD 795 DeWalt um, drill and I've got my trusty DCF 886 uh, impact driver and then um, for fun over the holiday I bought a rigid R82005 and you know what this is a phenomenal little drill um, I'm still on I've, I've you know I haven't really put it through its paces I mean to be fair I, I really just haven't but what I have done is I charged the batteries when I was in California when I went out to get the motor home and um, I'm still on the first battery you know it's impressive it's really well balanced it's a nice tool 
Um, it was about a hundred bucks. Uh, you know, honestly, I'd have bought the DeWalt if Home Depot had stocked it, but they didn't. And as a bonus, um, it has a lifetime warranty. So I registered the warranty. Well, we'll see. You know, lifetime warranties are kind of like political, uh, political promises. And that is, they're just full of shit. So I think we're going to start in the back. I'll just push that out of the way. And we'll actually switch to drill. Okay, so a couple of things they did there. Um, I actually slowed down once I got through the plastic because heat is the enemy of drill bits. And um, one of the things I learned from machining is that the faster you drill metal, the faster you destroy the bit uh, when you don't have any coolant. So what I've got here is just a little, um, uh, I've got a little uh, countersink bit mounted there. It's gonna break out a little bit of hardware and I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. Okay, so I'm back and I've got a 11 seconds inch socket with my Harbor Freight Pittsburgh composite ratchet um, that I just dropped. Um, you know, I've actually been really impressed with these composite ratchets. I wasn't expecting a whole lot from them. I thought it would be a throwaway tool, and it's actually, they're light, they're comfortable, they work, and they're cheap. So, um, I could not find any washers. Um, so, I'm just, you know, this is a eighth inch or three sixteenths. It's probably three and a half millimeter thick piece of aluminum. It'll be fine without a washer. So... I'm going to go ahead and just put this together. makes me nervous here is I'm using the impact driver because I have carpal tunnel in both hands so I really try to avoid turning screwdrivers because it makes my hands hurt um, but these are crown bolt which is now called Everbuilt. I guess they destroyed the crown bolt um, name and you know the reality is is Home Depot um, I sometimes call the hardware all hell hole hardware because it's a cluster you know, stuff's in the wrong place. I get it. Kids play up on the upper side of the, sh the shelves and, and there's a lot of people who just throw stuff around. I get that. But stuff not being on the shelf and, you know, having 10 bags of something in the wrong spot, that's not the customer's fault. That's the store. Um, and whether it's the Home Depot employee that works at the store or the Home Depot employee that works for Everbuilt, their captive hardware brand, it's still Home Depot's problem. So anyway, that's in there. I'm using one inch uh, number eight 32 screws. Um, I bought stainless steel screws because um, that's what I could find. Um, it's just as well because they're really low grade screws and one of the problems with them is that um, they often um, strip out very easily. Yeah, it'd be real nice to have my vise. Alright, so I've got an adjustable wrench here. Um, it's better than a pair of pliers, but not my first choice of tools for holding the nut while I tighten it. Yeah, it's probably. 
cool enough. All right, and now I just have to pick a spot. Okay, so that's mounted in there. Next step, I need to bring my uh, shop vac over here and vacuum up all this, this stuff that uh, I don't want to touch. So, um, uh, this is the tail end of my review of a Insight Tools um, True Track. It's not a bad tool. It does what it says it will do. Um, the only, uh, you know, I have a little bit of regret on it, um, simply because the company's hard to get a hold of. They have an 800 number that goes to voicemail, and they don't they don't do email, and their product descriptions are a little vague on their website. Eh, you know, it is what it is, but it's a basic American-made tool. Um, there are some things I would probably improve on. Um, I, I don't know that I would use this in uh, a production shop, but, you know, for a DIYer, great tool. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually setting up to cross-cut uh, a um, piece of plywood. This is uh, part of a video on building some temporary countertops that also will eventually become workbenches. So I've got uh, marks made here. I'm going to cross cut this piece of plywood and, and then I'll rip it uh, with the short track. Um, I eventually need to order the longer track extension from them. Um, and that's actually my frustration. I can't figure out on their website which item I should order. It doesn't, doesn't say what length it is. It doesn't say what it includes or doesn't include. So anyway, I'm going to slide these underneath here and, um, you know, they say that this can be used um, without clamps, but um, I found that it moved around a little bit, and so I actually prefer to have a clamp on it. You know, I don't, I don't like anything moving around when I'm um, operating a saw. So the clamping system itself is actually pretty good. It's real basic. And uh, it does apparently need a little adjustment. So there it is. It's it's clamped in. Um, you know, not going anywhere. Oh, actually, it did move a little bit, but you know, I, I'm applying a lot of force to this. So I'm going to grab my DeWalt saw that I've mounted um, the plate to. So this will just drop in here like this, and then, you know, this is really straightforward. I'll just run this across here, and it'll cut this piece for me. Um, the only downside of my cutting arrangement is, you know, I've got a board hanging all the way off. <sighs> you know, I actually don't like that, and I really don't care if it puts a mark on, on the uh, glue area of my tables. So I'm going to re-rig this. And this is just to make sure nothing moves while I'm cutting. Um, you know, it's not, it's not rocket science. So I'm not, I'm not doing anything major with these. I'm just securing it so it doesn't move while I cut it. Now, so we'll go ahead and get this uh, set up and make our cut. And make sure I'm engaged in the track and here we go. So this is the area I would typically get into trouble trying to make this cut by hand, aside from the fact that it wouldn't be as straight as it already is. Um, so with the track saw and this, what you see I'm, I'm using, it was only $159. This is fantastic. So 
So I can very quickly, safely, and easily make cross cuts that would otherwise be very difficult for me to do by myself. Um, and I've still got a perfectly usable piece of plywood left, which normally my cutoffs don't wind up being that nice. I do plan to make a cutting table. Um, I'll shoot some video when I get to it. In the meanwhile, you know, you'll just have to um, imagine it or search for it. Um, it's really inspired by something I saw uh, from a group called Woodworkers Guild of America. Um, that's actually where I found this uh, track saw uh, mentioned. I was searching for it. So I'm setting up for two rip cuts here. I'm doing a 26 and a 21. It's my upper and lower shelves. Now, one of the modifications I made to mine is once I set it up, I drew arrows on it so I would be able to remember uh, which way it was forward. And because this track's not long enough to do my rips, I uh, only get to use one clamp. You know, it slows me down a little bit, but it's really not the end of the world. Oh, I forgot to take center measurements. So uh, one thing you do need to do if you're doing what you are watching me do is you need to put a mark in the center, just like if you were doing a, a um, the, the hard way by hand by drawing a line. Label them because, well, Murphy's Law. You don't label it, you'll use the wrong one. If you do label it, you'll question why you even did it in the first place. And again, I mean, this is stuff that's just nearly impossible to do any other way. Um, and this makes it very, very quick and simple. Doesn't matter how many times I stop and start, um, my uh, alignment is pretty good. Feature. Yeah, about that cutting table. Do need to make one. You know, as was once told to me, do as I say, not as I do. So I'll plant this one.
So the original plan when I bought this was, um, you know, I really admired the Festool, but I just didn't admire its price. Yeah, that can't possibly be right. So I got a mark that just looks like it's way out of bounds here. So I'm gonna go ahead and double check it. And it is. But uh, anyway, so the original idea was that I would test this out before I invested heavily in it. That way, worst case, I still had a really nice DeWalt saw. And best case, I had a track saw that worked and I didn't spend $1,000 on it. You know, I think I'm at, you know, two something or other for this whole rig. Um, and I'll probably will spend some money because what I really want is a, um, I, I want a four foot track and a, and a track that's set up for eight feet at all times. I don't want to have to break it down and put it back together and break it down. That's just a pain in the ass. So here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 